Everybody, happy New Year, Mario! Happy New Year, New Little Elves that works on Earth Base! Oh, all right. <laughs> what, 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 Mimi Milo? What you say? Happy New Year to all humans in here. All humans in here? <laughs> Are you guys not having any party tonight? Of course not, because uh, yesterday I have one. Because what? Yesterday, I had one. You had a party yesterday with your family and friends? Who? We go to the cinema. Ah? So, we go to the cinema. Cinema? Ah, yeah. what movie did you watch? Avatar. Avatar. <laughs> Avatar! <laughs> yeah, Avatar. Ah, the second, second, second um, Avatar 2. Was it as good as they said? I heard some reviews saying it was a really good movie, but then I also heard that it was very racist. I think it's good. Yeah. Wow. It's hard not to be good as long as. Gosh, I was making the in three D and yeah, it's very perfect. In three D. The movies in three D. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. I should uh, I should try to check. It must be playing in the Nang too. Or I want to see what it is. What about you, Lily? No party for New Year's Eve? No party. You didn't you're not going to dinner tonight? You're not you and no. your family, your mom, you're not going out for fried chicken, nothing? Nothing. Ah, uh, what kind of New Year's? My friends, that? my friends will mo one of my friends will move to another school. One of your friends will move to another school because she moved house or another because reason? she moved house. Okay, so zoning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um well that's not good. You you're not gonna be able to see your friend every day. That's too bad. But um you and and uh, Paris are not gonna be able to go do anything tonight for New Year's Eve? Go to Halong and see the fireworks or something. So I can't believe you and Paris they're not gonna go at least have some fried chicken or something. Nothing. Sheesh. Not and tomorrow. No, no special anything. Hello, everybody. Hello. Nothing. Oh, what about last night? Did you do something last night? No, I didn't. Oh my god, what's going on with this stuff? You're supposed to party, party. <laughs> oh, we have to go hang out with Lily, and then they can take you to dinner. Ha 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 ha. Right? You're going to take Lily with you, Mimi, to dinner? I just stay at home and play games with my friends. Mm, do you play games with your sister too? No. Why? She needs to study last night. Oh, but I mean sometimes. I don't mean yesterday. I rarely play games with my little sister. Okay. All right. Fix your camera. You have new headset? No. No? Oh, you have different headsets from your sister, though. She's got big pink ones. Yeah. <laughs> you got big black ones. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Turn your camera down a bit. I should I should be able to see your shoulders. Just a little. Yeah, right there. That's perfect, because then your face is like in. See how, see how I'm positioned, right? I can zoom, zoom out. I can you know, zoom out. I know. With you, you have to physically move your camera. But right where you are, because the idea... Right, is you want to be in the middle, of course. You don't want to be over here, right? And you don't want to be down here, <laughs> and you don't want to be up here. But the idea is you want your mouth and your chin to be right in the middle. See how I'm sitting here, right here, and the camera is set when I sit properly, right? I'm right, I'm right in the middle, and that way, when I'm teaching English. I can see sometimes someone say you say the words at the same time, but this way I can see your mouth moving. Number one, number two, I can also see when your your pronunciation. It helps me because sometimes you'll say like subscription, and I, and I can see you're not closing your mouth, right? Subscription, right? I can tell a lot of the sounds you make just by the way you move your mouth. It's really important that I see your face. <laughs> not important you see mine, but it's important I see yours. 
All right. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to go to diets. Now we talked about some of this before, right? We already went through. Let me let me see my channel page here for a second, just to refresh my memory on the lessons we already did. Um. All right now, if I pause that, ooh, there we go, and go down here to twenty-two. Yeah, last week we did taste, but that was only in them where we were doing different, different things, different eating. We did shopaholics. We did the the world village, and now we did Barcelona, and teenagers asking for help. Okay, so last week we talked a bit about food. Today is a little bit more about. Remember when we talked about diets? I think it was this class because there's another class that's doing a bit on food too. I forget which one it is. I think it's interest. Ah, it's interest seven. They've done two two classes in a row about food and diets and vegetarians and all that stuff. So that's why I keep getting confused with you guys. Um, so I don't think I've said this before, but diets, okay? Diets, we're not, we don't really mean, like when we hear it all the time, when you hear diet, what do you think? Maybe they're fat. Exactly. We always, we always associate it, connect it to weight, right? It's almost always like, oh, he needs to go on a diet. Oh, I'm on a diet because I'm too fat or I need to lose weight or I need to wear this dress for this party for New Year's, right? So you hear people talk about diets all the time. Like it's like um, a routine or a, a, an exercise or medicine or, or they have to stop eating. And it's almost always about losing weight. But I don't know how they, they started saying it that way because diet is a billion dollar industry right you you see advertisements for to go on a diet diets to lose weight and all these different things all the time on the news in the papers on the internet everywhere it's a big big business um and the, the, there's a lot of realities to that but that we're not going to talk about diet because we need to lose weight diet is what everybody eats Right. If I go see a dietitian, right, a person who specializes in nutrition and the foods we eat, um, it's not about losing weight. It's about your body type, um, and there's a few other things related to the body. I'm not a dietitian, so I don't know. I don't know what exactly they look for, but it's about what you're eating, right? So, for example. I can tell you that my diet, and everybody, if you eat, you have a diet. But uh, I'm not trying to lose weight. Are you trying to lose weight, Lily? No, I'm not. No. Milo, are you trying to lose weight? I'm trying because I have a class. Oh, really? You are trying to lose weight. Really? I thought you were dancing and active all the time. Why do you need to lose weight? How many kilos are you? I don't want to show it. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a feeling you're probably not overweight. I'm guessing. But then again, all I see is your face all the time. So I don't know for sure. But I have a feeling you're probably a very healthy young girl. Um, but my point is that everybody has a diet. My diet, and I'm not trying to lose weight, is a lot of meat, pasta, Dairy products. I love my cheese and my creams and 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 butter. Um, but cows also produce milk, and from milk, right? We can make butter. We can make a, a cheese. We can get cream from that because the cream goes through the top of the milk. Did we talk about the milkman and all that before? No. Okay, so I'll tell you that in a second. Because it's important that you understand what diet really means. It doesn't mean someone's trying to lose weight. Um, so what else can you get from milk? Right. Right. Remember with vegans, they don't eat any animal products. We talked about that last week, right? Vegetarians and the difference between a vegetarian and a vegan. Vegetarians um, still eat... Um, well, basically, they eat almost everything except one thing. Meat. What do 
meat. That's right. They don't. And and some people consider fish a meat, and some people consider uh, fish not a meat. Right. So, and I think it has something to do with some religions too, but I'm not sure because that's what it said on Google. Right. So basically, a vegetarian eats everything except meat, pork, and beef, and chicken, any meat. Um, but a vegan is a little bit more. Right. Remember the vegan. They don't eat meat and they don't eat what? Animal products. Animal products, that's right. So any any food that animals produce, right? Even honey from a honeybee. And I found out a bumblebee and a honeybee are different kinds of bees. Honeybees produce honey. Bumblebees, even though they eat the nectar from the from the flowers, which is the same as the honeybee, that's how they put it in their cook. Co cocoon, not cocoon. What do they call that? Um, 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 um. What's that called again? Uh, I forgot. It was one of my favorite cereals when I was a kid. Honeycombs. Yeah, the honeycombs with all the little. It's really, really nice with all the little holes in it, uh, where the honey is. And apparently, it ferments by the by them flapping their wings and it ages, and that's how they make honey. It was really cool when I was reading about it. I can understand. I can't explain it that well, but. Uh, I'm not a biologist, <laughs> but, um, and then what they call, what do they call eggs? Food that comes from chicken. Do you remember that word? Poultry. Poultry. Uh, those are eggs. And of course they don't eat eggs either. So that's the difference between those two. And why am I saying that? Ah, because diets, right. I love a lot of the herbs and spices. I'm really into garlic and onions and stuff like that. I love my potatoes. I like many I like many vegetables and many fruit. Um, and I like my nuts and my seeds too. So I eat everything basically. I, I, I don't hold back on anything. I like salads too. I like I like just about everything. But some people only eat a little bit of meat and they eat a lot of rice, right? So you guys, what's your main diet? What do you eat the most of? Rice and what? What about you, Milo? What's uh, the most popular, not the ones you like the most, but what do you eat the most? Rice and what? What do you normally have at home every week? So you, your diet is made up of a, a lot of rice and vegetables and... And a lot of fish. All right. So you have a, a, a very, very much a seafood diet. Yeah. What about you, Lily? Uh, rice, pork, and some vegetables. And a lot of pork. Yeah, a lot of Vietnamese pork is a big staple, like a big part of their diet. Uh, pork is very popular in Vietnam and many of the Asian countries. Beef is more expensive, I think. Um, yeah, so that's your diet. Yeah, okay. So that's why we're going to talk about different diets, and we're going to talk about some people in China, Canada, Africa, um, and some of the diets they have, the different kinds of foods they eat. And I had to add, um, because I used all the vegetarian and vegans and stuff last week in that class, so I had to add a few other words in here for our vocab so it might get a little difficult towards the end so let's get started hmm. biscuit exactly i didn't want to say anything and i wanted you guys to try to figure it out um the americans north america we call them cookies i don't know about australia and all these places but i know the uk england word for these is biscuits biscuits when I grew up, a biscuit was like a was like a cooked bread that we could have at the dinner table, almost like a dinner roll. Um, and, and it's a French; it comes from a French word too, biscuit, biscuit. Um, so you just forget the I. Bis, it, it's biscuits, Milo. Biscuits. Don't forget your tss at the end. Biscuits, because we always buy many, not just one. Biscuits, unless it's a big biscuit, a big cookie. I remember a cookie shop uh, back home, and we could go in and buy these big cookies. They were like the size of a small pizza. It was really cool. So you only bought one. <laughs> biscuits. Yeah, biscuits. A couple of easy ones to start with here. 
So again, what do they call them in America? Uh, I mean, in UK. Snack. No, a snack is anything you eat. Any small foods. Popcorn. Chips. Chips is what we call it in America. It's like cookies and chips or biscuits and... <laughs> No, it's a hard one to say. Crisps, crisps, crisps. Say that, Milo. Crisps, 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 crisps. Yeah, two S's. Crisps again, Milo. Crisp. Not crisp. Crisp is only one. Crisps, crisps. crisps. <laughs> it's difficult to say. Can you say it, Lily? Crisps. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And another interesting little fact here is they call the potato chips here. They call these, right? They're both the same thing from potatoes. Uh, potato chips in Canada uh, Canada and America. And then in, in uh, UK, they call them potato crisps. But chips is a word that they use in the UK and on many places, not just the UK. But what does, if you want to order or eat some chips in London, what are you going to buy? What's the American word? Right? There's a famous saying, not a famous saying, but a dish that was very, very popular before back in the cod fishing days. It's changed a lot. There's a lot of international foods. I think curry is a very big, very popular dish now in England. Because somebody, uh, a couple of years ago, I said fish and chips is, uh, is the most popular street food in, in London, in England. And he's like, no, it's not. <laughs> so I've never been to London, so I don't know. And some people say that. Some people say, oh, pizza is, this is how you make a pizza. And then Italians look at the pizza and like, that's not how we make a pizza. That's the American version of how you make a pizza. We make it totally different, you know. So, and unless you've been there and you've experienced it yourself, the Chinese food and the Asian food I've eaten in Canada, they said, oh, authentic Chinese, authentic Vietnamese food. Well, when I come here and eat it, it's very different than what they say it is over there. <laughs> very different. So, a very uh, now I think I'm safe to say this one of the past popular foods in England was fish and chips, right? That's deep fried battered fish, which used to be caught a really, really good fish, a white meat fish and chips. What do you think the chips are? They're not potato chips. Oh, your your French fries. French fries, exactly. And I think it's when they take an actual real potato and they chop it up into potato wedges. And I think what you do is you you got to get the starch out of it, right? It's it's um, starch is good for you, but when you're making French fries, you want to make them really crispy, right? Um, so you soak them in cold water for I don't remember how long, maybe half an hour or something, maybe an hour, maybe the longer the better. But that then the water turns like white. And that's all the starch coming out of the potatoes. And then you take the potatoes out, the potato wedges that you cut up. But anyway, um, I did have a restaurant. Junk Jungle Joe's was the name of my restaurant in Indonesia. And it was a fried chicken restaurant. And there we had the potato cutter and everything. And we made our own homemade fresh French fries. And then you lay all the potato strips, the chips, our French fries, on a on a on a towel and then you put another towel on it and you just kind of pat them dry. You want to get all the water off them. You want them to be dry. And then you can throw them in the deep fryer and fry them like french fries. And then they're really good and it's a lot healthier than the ones you get in fast food. Um so they used to cut potatoes up, potato wedges, but they called them chips, potato chips, like chipping pieces off a potato i think so yeah so chips is potato french fries in in the uk french fries are chips in america chips are potato chips in america and potato chips in the uk are crisps yeah that's a long story about potato chips <laughs>
And I'm pretty sure fish and chips, which I know is really good, is not the most popular food in London or England or the UK anymore. Hmm. That's that. Next. <sighs> what country are we looking for here? Right down in the bottom here. I just found out they have three capital cities in this country. Really strange. So you have Cape Town, which is one of the cities right down here on the water. It's famous. It's got baboons and all kinds of crazy wild animals. They're famous for their diamond mines. This is their flag. They had the World Cup there a while back. Well, quite a few years now. I guess now we're going back more than 10 years. Um. It was a Dutch colony, I believe, when they found all the diamonds and stuff. It's a very beautiful place, but I hear they're having a lot of problems down there, too, because of the the, the black and the whites and the racism and all this stuff, which seems to be a problem all over the world right now. No? We don't know what country's down here? Where is Cape Town? Look how beautiful it is all along the water down here. The mountains, Table Mountain over here in the background. Just beautiful down there. A friend of mine, Dale, she used to teach in Kumfa. I don't know if you guys ever met her. Um, she's a small woman. Uh, she has blonde hair. And she used to teach in Kumfa. I think EFE. I think that's where she taught. It's one of those schools. Uh, she just contacted me on Facebook um, last week wanting to know if I would hire her because she wanted to come back to Vietnam. And I'd very much like to work with her. I'm going to contact her again. I think I'm going to try to do some videos with her on YouTube. Let's see if I can see how that works. But let's see what happens. Okay, so you don't know which country it is down there? Sometimes my screen is black. I don't know why. Your screen goes black. Yeah. Oh. Is that? Yeah, South Africa. You got it. Does your screen go black sometimes, Milo? Uh, no. No? Okay. So it's got to be your connection, Lily, or possibly if the screen is actually going black, but you still hear me, then maybe there's something wrong with the computer. Maybe your graphic card or something like that. It might need some upgrading. This is. Are you on the old computer or the new computer? New computer. Ah, oh, so it must be the connection then. South Africa. Beautiful place. I would love to visit that place too. For a bonus point, you have five seconds. Can anyone tell me the name of this island? Five. Four. Three. Two. Famous, famous cartoon Disney movie came out named after this with the with the with the horse and the, the zebra and the lion and the penguins. One. Lion King. Oh, Milo? Lion King. Oh, Lion King. No. No, no. Madagascar. Do you guys remember the cartoon Madagascar? Where they escaped the zoo, a lion, a zebra, a giraffe, and some penguins or something, and they escaped wanting to go back to Africa, their homeland. Um, and they were in a, a zoo in New York City. And it was their travel trying to go back home. They escaped the zoo. Did you ever see that movie? Really funny Disney animation movie? No, I don't know. Okay. I just heard about it. Yeah, well, I think it was so popular, they made, like, Madagascar 2 and 3. And the penguins were very, very popular in that movie. Yeah, they had, like, oh, yeah. secret watched, agent penguins. I watched the vi review videos. You did, huh? Yeah, it's really funny. I watched it. I haven't watched a Disney movie in a long time, but I, I have to admit that, like, um, the Minions and... Uh, and uh, there's a lot of them. I can't remember all the names, but I, I find them very funny. They're very entertaining. They're well done. Now, oh, what did someone say? Uh, talked about animals. Most of the lion. Oh, oh, you said um, Lion King. That's a classic, classic, classic um, story. Yes. Now, as far as I know, I've never actually looked on to see like on a map to highlight the areas where the lions roam. But from what I understand is this area over here. Again, I've never been there, but I'm um as far like I know the green stuff, right? This is that means it's a jungle, right? That this is Congo 
in the middle here. This is where you're going to find all the gorillas, right? They live in the mountains and the, and the jungles of Africa, right? And of course, all this yellow area is what? This this brown, beige, light brown colors. What, what's What's all this landscape? It's not a forest. It's not a jungle. It's not green. So what would it be? A desert. That's the Sahara Desert. Yeah, it's so big you could put the entire United States in here. That's how big that is. It's huge. So down here, what you see is a lot of mix, right? It's a dryish area, mountainous. See, so look at South America here. You know, you've got green and you've got dry mountains, and you, you know, so it's a mixture all through here. I believe this is what we call the savanna. All these areas in here, I believe. So it's a flatter area. And that's where the lions, because I remember Kenya and Zambia, all down here around Lake Victoria, I think this is called, the biggest lake in Africa. Um, I believe this is where all the giraffes and the zebras and the, the lions and all them live down in this area, through these lands down in here. That's a big, I'm showing a big, big area. All of that stuff is in that area because those animals don't live in the jungle. In the jungle, you have different kinds of animals. Like I said, that's where you're going to find the gorillas and other things. And then when you go up into the desert, well, you're not going to find lions in the desert or gorillas in the desert, right? You're going to find scorpions and little mice and different insects and snakes. Different wildlife here different wildlife through here and a different wildlife through here yeah kind of like three little three different eco ecosystems so lion king would be based in this area not in south america not in south africa a lot of history here and then there's a river that comes right through here I don't know which way it goes. It works its way all the way down to the Lake Victoria. It's the biggest, it's the longest and biggest river in Africa. It is also, depending how you measure it, either the longest river in the world or second to the Amazon River. The Amazon is the biggest for sure. More water mass. It's deeper, it's wider. More water in that one, but the length is very hard to measure, right? Because they branch off everywhere. Which way do you go? Which way do you measure? It's hard. Do you remember what what the name of this river is? The longest or second longest river in the world? I think it's the longest. It's the Nile. Yeah. The Nile of Egypt. Now, this is where Egypt is, right? It's kind of the breadbasket of the Mediterranean. It's a very, very important place throughout history. And all the Egyptian pyramids and all that stuff, all those civil over here in Libya too, and all the way down the Nile, you're going to find pyramids. This is the old ancient civilization of Egypt down here. That's where Cairo and the pyramids are. Another beautiful place to visit. Okay. Oops, sorry. I love it. Onion, garlic, garlic. garlic. <laughs> yeah, not onion. Same family. Onions and garlics come from the same family, uh, but garlic is a lot stronger. Yeah, garlic. Do you like garlic, Lily? Yes. Yeah, me too. I love when you just. Put, well, onions too. When you throw them in the frying pan and they start cooking and the smell, oh, I just kind of float to the kitchen. It smells so good. What about you, Milo? Do you like garlic and onions? Yeah, I like it. Mm, me too. It's a wonderful thing to cook with, cooking your steak and beef and vegetable. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, garlic. Okay, this is very popular in the Mediterranean, Mexico, the, the, the South America. I, I used to eat a lot of this, like street food in Canada. And you could do anything. You could put meat and vegetables. You can make it any way you want. But it's about the, the bread that we make really, really flat. And then we kind of roll it all up. What do we call those? I'm going to order a... Spring rolls. 
Well, spring rolls, I, th- I believe, is originally an Asian dish that other countries have modified to their liking, like most people do. Just like pizza here is very different than pizza back home because here the pizzas are made to Asian taste, right? The way they like it. It's very different from the pizzas in America. And then, of course, you go to Italy and the pizzas are different there too, to their taste. These are just called wraps. They call them wraps, sandwich wraps, veggie wraps, chicken wrap, beef wrap, whatever you want to call it. Um, These breads are easy to make. We used to take our pizza dough at Cowboys and then flatten them right out, take a big plate to make a perfect circle, and then we could... We could cook them really quick and put cheese and everything inside and fold it over and we'd have a quesadilla. Um, it's, a, in my opinion, a really healthy way to make food on the streets because you can cut some fresh meat and fresh vegetables and some sauce and just roll it up. Easy to serve, easy to eat. You, you get all the food you need. Um, very practical. I don't know what kind of wrap that one is, but I don't understand. It's like rice inside these things, but I don't know what that is. You got carrots and all kinds of stuff. Maybe avocado there too. Banana. Is it banana? Oh, maybe. You can make it any way you want. That's what's wonderful about these things. This one is completely vegetable and salad wrap. Yeah, but it's so good. So good. A nice sauce. Mm, Very good. We call them wraps. I haven't seen too many wraps in, in Asia. Oh, well, yeah, no, they kind of do some in Hanoi street food. What do we got here? Van. It's not a van. It's not a bus. These are the ones that transport containers, the big the big trucks that travel long distances. Box. What kind of truck? This is more than a truck. Right? These Container. are the ones. Well, they take the, you can see, right? Like he's got a flatbed here, but you can see the small picture. He's got one of those big containers that you get off the ships when they get to the port and they put it on the, well, in America, we call them tractor trailers. Um, and you put that on there and then the truck goes across the country to all the, the, the cities inland for import and export. Very big industry. Now, I know some truck drivers in Canada, um, but there's another word that we call these big trucks, and they're called lorries. Did you know that one? A lorry? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure lorry is the UK English for these trucks, but in Asia, everybody calls them lorries too. Everybody I've talked to says, oh, a lorry, because I didn't even know it was a lorry until I moved to Indo- uh, Indonesia, and everybody would call those. I'd say, oh, wow, that's a nice tractor trailer. Or we'd also call it a big rig. Um, and they would say, a what? I said, the tractor trailer. Oh, you mean the lorry? A what? You call it a lorry? <laughs> I didn't know until I moved to Asia. Lorry. So a lorry driver. Yeah. Lorry drivers spend a lot of hours on the road. Many, many hours a day. Very lonely job. But some lorry drivers just love it. They just love being out on the roads and driving across the country. Especially in the West, because the roads are so nice. Yeah, They don't have the traffic they have like in Asia, in Vietnam, and in Indonesia. Um, and this, they have campers in the back. You see the truck here? How the back here, right behind him where someone's filming him, that's someone holding the camera, sitting there. Because obviously the camera is moving. Because they have, see, the, and there's a window up here on top of the, the red, a skylight. That extra cabin in here, behind him, he has a bed and he has a shelf and all kinds of stuff back there. He sleeps in there. Lorry drivers. Another country. This one's harder than South America, South Africa. This one is right down here on the west side. Bit of a bit of jungle, a bit of well, again, everywhere in Africa they call it God's land. It's just beautiful. It has jungles and savannas and has waterfalls, and it's a very, very beautiful place. But this one over here is called Angola. It's a very big country. If you look on the map, oh, I think right up here. I'll take this off. That big square right in here. So this part right where the hump. So it starts on the hump here, and it goes 
quite a ways in, all the way into here and then back up through here. So it has some forest area in here. Yeah, it's a really big country in Africa. One of the biggest. That's probably the biggest one right there. But yeah, pretty big. Probably a fourth or fifth largest country. It's a big one. And it's called Angola. Now, why do I put Angola in our reading? Because in our story, one of the guys, we're talking about a guy who drives lorry trucks. And he travel. his journey is 2,500 kilometers. So it's like, it's longer than Vietnam driving from Hanoi. From It's longer than driving from Kung Fa to Saigon. It would be like, it w I think I could be wrong, but I I'm pretty sure like from Kung Fa to Da Nang is about 900 kilometers, almost a thousand kilometers. And it's right in the middle. So I have to guess that Da Nang to Saigon, Ho Chi Minh, is another 900 or a thousand kilometers. So there's almost 2000 kilometers. So if you keep going south, you go to Phu Quoc Island or something. I think what he has to drive every week or whatever, how many days he does it for his job is like driving back and forth there and back. He drives his lorry um, that far, that much. And that's the same as driving from South Africa all the way up to Angola. And that's his job. He drives from S South Africa down here, and he drives to somewhere in Angola here and back and forth. So he goes that way. And that way, and that's his job. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we're going to read about this guy and what his diet is. So that's why Angola is in here, so you can get an idea of what we're talking about when we read it. Angola. I've only heard a little, little, little bit about the country of Angola. I don't know much about it. Okay. All right. So Angola. But it sure looks pretty. Some nice scenery. Angola. Food. What's this? Cabbage. Yeah, cabbage. Do you like cabbage? Yeah. Yeah? Do you like like the kimchi, the ones they make Korean food and it's really spicy? Oh. Yeah, yeah, cabbage. You like that too, huh? What about you, Milo? You like cabbage? You said you like Korean food, right? Mm, I like kimchi, but I don't really like cabbage. Oh, well, kimchi is cabbage. It's just the seasoning they put on it, right? I know it. I know it. Okay. So you, you like the Korean way of preparing cabbage, but not the way mom and dad cook cabbage. <laughs> is that what you mean? <laughs> I don't like mom and dad's chicken, but I like fried chicken. <laughs> yeah. That's like my grandmother when, when we used to eat there as kids. Everything she cooked was in a big pot and we... Boiled it. Boiled potatoes, boiled chicken, boiled everything. It's like, Wah! yuck. <laughs> I, I wanted the barbecue and I wanted to fry it and put salt and pepper and cheese. Oh, you can't eat that stuff. It's going to kill you. Yeah, I want to eat this. <laughs> um, so I love chicken, but I didn't like grandma's chicken. I like some of the Korean foods. Uh, I like the way they... I like the way they barbecue and then you you take all the different meats and stuff and then you put it in, in a lettuce leaf and then you wrap it and you eat it in lettuce. That is really cool. I like that. There was a really nice Korean restaurant in Jakarta where I lived and I ate there a lot. I liked it a lot. But I don't like cabbage that much. You know, if there's cabbage in the soup or something, okay, fine, I'll eat it. But I don't think I've ever bought a cabbage one time in my life. I don't think so. Not a big cat. I like lettuce, but cabbage, yeah, I can do without. Cabbage. All right, so we got the D again at the end here. So, Milo, ca, and it's not a bud, it's a idge, right? Idge, cabbage. Cabbage. Bidge. Bidge. Lily? Cabbage. Cabbage. Where's Paris? She's downstairs eating her dinner. Oh, okay. Are you hungry? No, I'm not. <laughs> no. I already ate 
noodles. Oh, you had some noodles before class? Yeah. Me too. I had some Vietnamese, I don't know what you call it, but every Saturday lay buys this because we have classes morning, afternoon, and night. So there's no time to cook. So it's a white wrap and then you peel it off and then you can take it's all this processed pork because it's probably not that good for you. And I fry it up a bit with some onions and garlic and then I put it on and I wrap it up and I stick it in the soy sauce with garlic. It's really easy to eat and it's tasty. So it's perfect for Saturdays. Every Saturday we have that. I'll have to ask Miss Lay, what is it we what we ate today or every Saturday? Maybe it's pho. pho. It's not noodles, but it's like the flat noodles, but you put it on a plate and then you put the meat and everything in it and, the, and, and herbs and then you roll it up like a roll and then you dip it in the soya with garlic and eat it. Okay. So that is cabbage. Let's go to the next one. Three, one for Lily. Mm. Okay. So this is going to be a place too. I didn't know this, but apparently this is the biggest city in China. That wasn't my guess. What city is this? Or what city are we looking for? And I can tell you that it's right down here, right on the East Coast. It's a very important port city, right? Easy to get to that country, easy to get to that country, even down south. I don't know if it's this little corner here or that corner, but it's right down here somewhere. Famous Chinese city, and they say it's the largest city. At least it's definitely the most populated city for sure, and a very important port city. What are we, what, 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 what's the name of it? What are the big cities in China, right? We know we have Hong Kong, which is kind of disputed a bit because they want independence again. And it Shanghai, was please. Yeah, Shanghai is the one we're looking at. Shanghai, a very important city for. I almost went to teach English there a few years ago. I almost went. So I just chose not to do it. I came to Hanoi instead. And everybody was really nice to me. <laughs> Very friendly people. Too friendly sometimes. Can't even sit down and have a cup of coffee and people come sit down with me and want me to drink with them. Ah, give me some space. But I would love to visit Shanghai. So we have... In the south, way down here near Taiwan, that island over here, which I should have, I should have, well, I'm going to wait till this gets big again. I'm going to pause it for a minute and do a little geography check. Okay, pause. All right, I'm going to move my cameras over here for a minute. Okay, so my little marker here again. Shanghai is either in this little area or this area, but it's somewhere right here, right? It's a port city, just like Halongbei. So China is roughly all this red, rough, give or take. This is Mongolia here between China, Mongolia. What's the country above China? Way up here. What's that country? It goes all the way to the Atlantic Ocean, here, uh, the Pacific Ocean over here, and it goes all the way to Europe. It's the biggest in the world. That's Russia. This is the area. Really rough winters. Long, cold winters. Some of the coldest places on the planet. This is the country of Russia. I see how huge it is, and it goes all the way over to Europe. Way over there. Moscow. Um. Yeah, very cold up here. This lake right here, I think that's it right there. That's Lake Bacal. It is the deepest lake in the world, the biggest freshwater lake in the world, Lake Bacal. And it completely freezes over. You can drive your car on it in the winter. <laughs> ah, so Mongolia is in here. So these two countries here, you have one here, north and south. So actually China, well, maybe it goes all the way up to here. Maybe I got that wrong because Russia borders it somewhere here and then China borders it here. Only two borders on this country. What country is this? Right? You know, Vietnam is down here. All right? There's Vietnam. I'm here. You guys are in here somewhere. There's China. There's India, the big triangle here. Right. There's a few little countries, Nepal and Bhutan and 
Bangladesh. And there's a few different things here that are hard to draw. No, you don't know what this is? What's this one over here? It gets a lot of tsunamis because of where they are, right? The shelf. Japan. Yeah, that's Japan. All right, and you can see, you see they're on one of those continental shelves, right? You can see up here they're high, and then here it's really deep where it's dark. And that's two continents rubbing together. And that's why they have so many earthquakes in the water close to Japan. And every time this moves, it creates a big tidal wave tsunami that comes and hits Japan. <laughs> That's why they have so many tsunamis, because of where they are. They're right on the edge of a tectonic plate, and the other side of that tectonic plate is the biggest ocean in the world. Not a good place to be when there's an earthquake. Very bad. So if this is Japan, what's this island here close to Hong Kong? Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan. That's where there's so much dispute, debate and everything now, because Taiwan is an independent country right now. They have their own government, and they're a democracy and all this stuff. But China says, no, no, you're not. You belong to China. So there's a lot of people scared that China is going to attack Taiwan and take the government out to take this over and make it make it China. A lot, a lot of people are worried about that. Now, I know the text is all in here, but you guys can see all these little islands in here. Can you see that? Yeah. See, there's a whole bunch. This is Palawan here. All these islands down here. Really deep water again right here. What are these islands called? Right, Just across from Vietnam. Many of the teachers from there come here because they have a lot of English. Malaysia. No, no, no. No, no, no. See that? Philippines? Yeah, these are the islands of the Philippines. That's Taiwan directly above, Hong Kong over here somewhere, Shanghai. And then there's another big, 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 big city somewhere around here. I don't know exactly where. It's hard to see with this map. It's not very accurate. Right? There's the Himalayan mountains that divide India and China. Uh, what? This is the capital. What's this place of China? Those are the three biggest cities, I think. Hong Kong. I don't know where Hong Kong is. Hong Kong's like an island. I thought it was closer this way, but Taiwan's over here. Somewhere's down in the south. Beijing. That's Beijing up in here. So again, our last question here. If this is Japan, this is China. What are, what's this country here? This peninsula. What's this country here between Japan and China? I'm really surprised if you don't guess this. And it's divided into two, north and south. Korea. Yeah, this is South Korea, Seoul, and this is North Korea, and I can't remember what the name of their capital city is. Yeah, that little peninsula, that's Korea. Yeah, all right. Little geography for you. <laughs> okay, this is what gives you energy. And I think the average man has to have like 2,500 of these a day to have enough energy. And a woman is like 2,200 a day that they need to eat. It's what produces the energy in our body. Right? A unit of energy often used as a measure of the amount of energy that food provides. Something in the food, like a hamburger has a lot. Uh, lettuce doesn't have many at all. Casserole. Oh, this is not casserole. Casserole is a dish. <laughs> but it's close. It sounds like that. Cholesterol. Oh, no. Cholesterol. What the heck is cholesterol? It's something the body produces. It's, it's a lot of confusion about cholesterol. Um, I don't know. But it, it, too much cholesterol in your blood causes clots in your arteries and that's how people can get heart attacks but there's a lot of reasons why people have cholesterol but we need cholesterol too now what i'm looking for is it's just like when they say if you run for 20 minutes you'll burn how many mm, if you're on energy. a diet well yeah you burn the energy but what are you burning 
calories. All right, that's if you if you eat too many calories because your body. Okay, now I'm just talking about average person, right? Man, man and woman. Like I said, I think I think the healthy average for a male is like 2,500 calories. And everything you eat has a different number of calories, right? Like if you have hamburgers and stuff like that, there's more calories in cheese and milk and ice cream than there is in lettuce and tomatoes and potatoes, right? So it's different for everything you eat. But everything has calories. Um. And for a man, it's like 2,500, 2,500. For a woman, the average amount, recommended amount is like 2,200 or something. That's how much we normally want to burn off in a normal active day. But now if you don't eat, eat enough calories, often you're going to be very tired all the time because your energy levels are down. And if you eat too much, like some people, they eat 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 calories in a day. Well, if they don't, if they're not working in the forest, chopping trees every day, and they need a lot of energy, all of those extra calories when you go to bed, like the sumo wrestler, he's just going to get really, really, really fat. Because all those will transform into sugars and fats, and then it's not healthy for you. So that's why part of being a dietitian is to calculate if you want to be physically fit for a certain thing, you might want to eat certain foods and have certain calories and calories. That's where we get our energy. It's in the food. Cereal. Cereal. Yeah. All kinds of different cereals and milk and, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I used to eat cereal every morning when I was a kid. But uh, again, I'm trying to trying to make some homemade cereals. It's not easy. It's tough. Cereal, Milo. Yeah. Cereal, real, yeah. Cereal, Lily. Cereal. Cereal, yeah. Okay, so what we got here now? Any canned. Food that has been hermet hermetically, I meant, meant to check that. I don't know what that word is. Sealed and commercially processed and prepared for human consumption. What do we call canned food? What, what are they canning it in? Canned food. Yeah, it is canned food, but there's another word for that. I think it's what the, the material I mean, we're going to double check all that right now. But first, I want to know what this her hermetical, hermetically, hermetical, I'm guessing. No, just an adjective, hermetically meaning. Here we go. So, yeah, an adverb, yeah. In a way that, okay, so in a way that is completely airtight. It means it's been stored, sealed, so shut. Right, you no air gets in. So these again, the word I'm going to say that we both we all know, canned goods, right? Canned foods, uh, canned meat, canned fish, canned vegetables. This started a long time ago. Uh, there was even canners that you could buy. I remember my grandmother and them used to can food at themselves at home a long time ago. Um, it was quite revolutionary at the time, especially. If, in the north, because you could store food all winter long, you your vegetables and all kinds of stuff in there and meats. No air would get in, so it wouldn't go bad. Um, now, there's a downside to it as well. Uh, again, we use preservatives to make everything fresh and look nice inside the cans too. So you're still getting a lot of chemicals from canned foods. I, I don't eat canned foods anymore either. If I'm going to have a tuna, I'm going to buy the tuna, cook it, and I'm going to crush it with a fork and mix it with mayonnaise and make my tuna sandwich. It's so much better and it's healthy that way. I don't buy the canned foods anymore. But when we were kids, we didn't know that. And I used to eat canned tuna all the time. And these I ate all the time. My dad loved these. These are these long cans. You open it up and it was it was um, salty fish. And you just eat them really, really. Oh, it was so nice. They were called kippers. And they had sardines and different things like that. Really, really tasty. If you, it, and Some people didn't like it, but I really liked it. 
The other word for canned f- canned food is tinned. Tin, a tin can. All right. If I remember correct, tin is a metal. All right. Yeah. Okay. So when you see those tin cans, all these are tin. This metal that they're right. All these cans here you see this silvery can. The metal is tin. Now, a silver white metal, a chemical element of atomic number 50. Um, so it is, or like an aluminum as well. Okay. Cookie tin. So it's a metal. And now if I remember correctly, the bronze age in history. Um, let's see if I can figure that out. I think it was, you had to melt it. You would mix tin and copper. Tin and copper. Another metal. Tin and copper alloy. Yeah, here we go. That's right. That's how you make bronze. Bronze is the kind of reddish, reddish, reddish metal. I can't show you any pictures here again, of course, because it's all on Google. Yeah, it's like nine to one ratio. Here we go. Bronze alloy traditionally composed of copper and tin. Modern bronze is typically 88% copper and about 12% tin. Bronze is exceptional hist- ha- uh, is of exceptional historical interest and still fi- fi- finds wide applications. Yeah, that that is so important to history because we actually have an era that's called the Bronze Age. Now, I think this was okay. Well, I'm just gonna find out right now. The Bronze Age. When was that? Some reason I'm thinking 1300s, but I think it's like, I think it's like more than 2,000 years ago. I think it's like 3,000 years ago. But again, I'm not a historian. Historian, Bronze Age. Let's see what year was that? What era? What age? The Bronze Age. Here we go. Yeah. All right. So I'm right. It's it's like 3,000 to 4,000 years ago. That's when they started mining copper in some countries and they started mining tin in other countries and then somebody a really smart mason or something someone who makes swords and stuff a metal worker figured out that mixing 10 about 10 percent of tin and 80 percent of copper together they could make a metal that was even stronger called bronze and that like changed it was like the internet because it changed how you could make your your swords and your and your shields and your armament for protection in war. So those who had bronze were like technologically superior than the other people. Um so that was a very very big changing in history at that time. It would have been big like the car, big like the train, big like the internet uh 3000 4000 years ago. The Bronze Age. And that's what it is. It's this tin metal mixed with copper. Yeah. History for you. <laughs> Do you love history yet? No. Oh. You don't want me to teach any more history? Maybe. Maybe yes, maybe no? Maybe no. Ah! <laughs> but then it's not more than just English. See, I have to... I have to have stories about history and geography and different things in our lessons so that you're not just learning English. You're learning more about the real world, too, that they don't teach you in school. It's important. (laughs) All right. Well, I refuse. I'm still going to teach history. (laughs) What are those? Well, we know they're French fries. Or what would they call them in uh, the UK? Chips. Chips. Yeah, that's right. But this is a you and I don't have a video for it. I couldn't find any on our on our licensed software. So I, I every time I can't find a picture, I take a chance and I go to the free Wikipedia site and I and I copy a picture there and I tell I put Wikipedia here so they know where I got it. And hopefully I won't get a copyright strike on these pictures. 
Um, but basically what it is, it's a gravy that we make that we boil water up with um, beef bones and onions and carrots and different things. It's really, really good, really tasty. I've tried to make it here, but I have a hard time making it. But in Canada and, and in the West, it's very popular. It's nice and hot. We put it on potatoes. We put it on our turkey at Christmas dinner. A lot of things. It's very popular. It's hot, really good. Um, and it's when you go to KFC, you can even get gravy on the side to dip your French fries in it. It's just so good. And your chicken. Um, and the white things, they're called cheese curds. Now, it's like a mozzarella cheese, like the white cheese you put on pizza. It's like that, but this one's done just a little bit differently, and then it's broken up and how they do it. I've seen some videos on it, but I can't really explain it very well. But you buy big bags, and you can reach in and grab all these like little popcorns of cheese. So you take your French fries. You put some curds. It's like a mozzarella cheese. Sprinkle it all over the French fries, nice and hot, so the cheese starts melting a little bit. And then you pour some hot gravy on top of that, and that's a dish. And it's very popular. You can buy it anywhere in Canada. It's got a French name. It's called, some people say it's the national food. <laughs> this has a lot of calories. You want to get fat? Eat this every day. <laughs> you would... I'm going to eat it. Cheese, French fries, gravy. Yeah, you're going to get fat for sure. Putin. That looks but tasty. It tastes wonderful. It is so good with the crispy French fries and the hot gravy and the melted cheese on it. Oh, my God. It's so good. I can't wait to go back to Canada just so I can go eat all the things I haven't had for 20 years. <laughs> Fried clams. Pizza donairs, no oh, steaks, good steaks, uh, putins. Oh, yeah, a lot of things I want to go eat when I go back to Canada. This is one of them, putin. If they do it right, it's really, really good. I don't know many people who don't like this. It's really, really good. Okay. It's putin. And it's in their story, of course, because we're talking about a teenager or a kid, of course, from Canada. And she's talking about the things she eats in Canada, which are very different than Vietnam. A different, different what? A Canadian's mm is very different than a Vietnamese mm what? Taste? No. All the food we all eat, we all have one. Mine is meat, meat, food. meat. No! Diets. Our diet. What we eat, our diet. Logo. Yeah, logos. Some easy ones here. Apple, Google, all the social medias. What's IKEA? What company is that? I don't think you have it in Vietnam. Does anybody know what IKEA is? I don't know. IKEA is a Swedish company. It's either Swedish or Finland, but I'm gonna say Sweden. Oh well, why do I why do I guess like that? I have I set up the computer set up with multiple screens and multiple browsers so that when I teach, I can always get an answer when I want the answer. And there we go. All I gotta do is type it in and I can tell you. <laughs> Netherlands, Canada. Well, it's so big. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm right. Sweden. IKEA is a Swedish multinational conglomerate based in the Netherlands. So um, the head office is not in Sweden anymore. <coughs> Designed to sell ready assembled furniture. I remember the story. It's in It's in one of the marketing books I read a long time ago. And the story of Ikea and how they became so big is quite remarkable, I have to say. Um, it was a Swedish guy who started building furniture in his garage. Typical success story, right? And if I remember, you know, it's been a long time. This I probably read this book around 20 years ago. I'm sure it was still in Canada. I think it was the five... marketing manager 
five minute marketing manager, I think was the name of the book, something like that. And what he did, this is before the internet, but he used to build furniture, like chairs and sofas and tables and everything and cabinets, everything in his garage. And people liked his stuff. He made it really nice designs, really good. So people would often come and get him to build furniture and he would, he was a furniture builder. But then he got a really good idea. He started making like a little magazine so people could order. So he could get the magazine or the little paper out into the neighborhood and get people to put them in their stores so people could pick one up for free, you know, all this kind of stuff. So more people would know about his furniture. And what he did to make it really ingenious is that everything he built, he made a diagram, a, uh, an ex explanation, right? This is part A, it had a little sticker, A, B, two, three, six, five, you know, and all the letters and numbers for all the pieces. And that way he could manufacture all the parts, box it and give it to people. And people could take the box home, open it up, follow the instructions. Oh, A and B go together here, here, supply all the screws and the tools you need. And they could build their own furniture at home and it was cheaper. So that became very, very, very successful. And of course, over many years, eventually, Ikea turned into an international business, but apparently it all started in a furniture builder's garage at his house. And that's what he did. It's uh, you go in and you buy the, you buy like they, what they do is they build the furniture for you, the bunk beds, everything you see it. Oh, wow. It's really nice. I love the design. It's so cool. I like it. I want that. And then you, it comes in a box and then you just put it together at home. Really easy. You can do it. I can do it. Very, very easy to put together. Like a little puzzle. They sell houses like that now too. You can pick your house and then it comes in freights and then you just screw the house together wall piece by piece. <laughs> Hard for us to do it, but they do it. Prefab housing. Six one. Oh my God. All right. What are kids? What are dogs and cats and animals, especially puppies? They're always sniffing around everywhere, always yes. listening everywhere. Curious. But what's another word for curious? What's a fancy, sophisticated word for curious? <laughs> I'm going to give you the point anyway, though, because it is the same. It does mean the same thing as curious, but this is a more... Yeah, I don't know. He's sophisticated. Inquisitive. Inquisitive. That's right. In quiz, z, not zitiv, z, tiv. Inquisitive. Milo? Uh, inquisitive. Inquisitive. Lily? Inquisitive. It's a quiz. Inquisa. Right? That I inquisitive. sounds like a uh. Inquisitive. 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 Stress on. Inquisitive. Yeah. Yeah. Wanting to discover as much as you can about things sometimes in a way that annoys people. Yeah. Because sometimes you can be nosy. Nosy also means curious and and uh, inquisitive. But nosy usually means is you're sticking your nose in other people's business. And people don't like that. Mind your business. Yeah. Like he's being naughty, right? He shouldn't be listening to, trying to listen to a conversation on the other side of the wall. Crazy, naughty boy. Inquisitive. That's a good one. Mm. This is an adjective as well that would be a synonym to not fair. Or unacceptable. What do they say down here? Not guided by or based on good sense. You know, the price of inflation and gas right now is ridiculous. It doesn't need, it doesn't cost more to produce it, but they're using the war on the Ukraine and saying that's the reason we have to pay more for gas and that's why it costs more for food because we have to spend more on shipping. And it's all baloney because they all want to, the, the corporations are making record amounts of money. They're making more money because it's not costing them any more to make it. 
you know, she will not agree with him or maybe she's spending too much money. And that's the husband is like, this is outrageous. Like, look, you look at the bills, look at the bills, look how much we make. We can't afford this. You have to use common sense. This is not good sense. Use common sense. Um, the kids can't share, you know, they can't find a medium ground. They are very, basically, you can't reason with that person. So what would be the opposite of reasoning with someone? That person is un unfair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kinda. Well, no, unfair could be bad, right? We, you and I could not agree, and I might say you are unreasonable. Right? To reason is to work things out, reason things out, right? Uh, our reason is also like the, the the why, but in this situation, let's say, let's say you and I are running a school. You know, it's a few years now. You finished your school, and and I hire you to work here, and you're very smart, so you're kind of like a business partner with me. Um, but you want to spend all this money on on new new desks and new paint job and new advertising, and I'm like, look, look, look. You need common sense. Look how much money we're bringing in. We cannot risk spending that much money. Look at the numbers, okay? We can't do that. We have to change the plan. And you're like, no, we have to take a risk. We have to do it this way. We'll get the money after. And I'm saying, no, we don't borrow the money to try to make more money we work with what we have and you're like no we borrow the money i can borrow it and we're gonna we're gonna get it back later right so you have your own reasoning why this should be done and i have my own reasoning why it should be done so i would say you're being unreasonable you're not looking at the facts and then you would say to me no trevor you're being unreasonable you're old school and you're old fashioned and we need to join the future and do new ways and be more innovative Right, so we can call each other unreasonable because we don't we don't see it the same way, and in our mind, uh, we're not using good sense or lack of common sense to be unreasonable, right? Unlogical. So that's a really good word. You're going to see that word a lot in the future, Milo. Unreasonable. Unreasonable. You are being unreasonable. I can't talk to you anymore. Lily. Unreasonable. It's because uh, of my headphones. What, Milo? It's because of my headphones. You're speaking in your headphone? Yeah. What? I don't know what she said. Do you know what she said, Lily? I don't know. I think she said she wants to eat her headphones. <laughs> I don't know. That's scary. You know that in Parliament, I believe. No, is it Parliament yes. or in the? Huh? Okay. Yeah, and then yeah. let's get the word first. Sorry. Oh yeah, this is a this is a probably a C one word. This is a tough one. But again, I gotta expose you to all these words so you'll be able to join the advanced reading later. So I got to make a diff at the, I, I try at the end of the lesson to add much higher level of words to you guys so that it'll be easier later. There's been a lot of in the media recently about the Royal marriage, I guess about something based on how it seems and not on proof. Right. So this is, it's kind of like assume, I assume he or she is like this because of what I see, but I don't have the evidence, right? Um, and there's a famous saying, you know, assuming makes idiots of us all, right? Because that means we're judging things on what we see, but we don't know how, we don't have all the evidence. It's like saying, oh, oh, you're guilty. You were next to the house. You stole the money. What? I'm just walking my dog. What are you talking about? Well, no, there's nobody else here. You're here. You had to do it. You know, but the, the real criminal went out the back door and into the forest. You know, but you're just assuming, right? You're you're coming up to conclusions and you don't have all the proof. 
right? So it's like rumors about this wedding and everything, marriage. Well, again, it's from stories, right? You don't know. You'll never know exactly. What is that sentence here? I can't read it. You'll never know. We'll never know exactly how it died. We can only. So again, now sometimes it can be the best we're going to get. Right. Um, you know, this animal is dead and all the other animals have eaten him. So there's nothing left but the bones. So it's going to be very, very hard to to find out if he died from disease or old age or was he shot because there's nothing left to examine. So all we can do is guess. And that word is another fancy, fancy word for assume or guess without all the information. It's conjecture. You, you, and now that we're in interest 22, well, you should always have it, but you should have a little notebook and you should be, should, you should be writing down all these words because you're going to start getting lots of new words every week. Conjecture. And we can only, we can only conjecture what possibly killed that cow. Um, again, the other one, there's been a lot of conjecture in the media, you know, a lot of media speculating, saying what they think is going on recently about the royal marriage, but they don't have all the proof. So, you know, you, you don't listen to that stuff. Conjecture, Milo. Conjecture, conjecture, yeah. Lily. Conjecture. Conjecture. We can only conjecture on the possible, on the poss possibilities. Okay. Only for a short time, not a long time. Lasting for only a limited period of time, not permanent. All right. These kids, uh, they opened a shelter to provide mm, housing for the city's homeless. You know, it's just so they can get back on their feet, find a job. Um, the job this is called a gig. See, gig work. It's fast. It's easy. It's flexible. So it's only for a short time. They just they go, they perform, they get paid, they go home. You know, it's not like every day, every week. It's not the same thing all the time. It's just like being a contractor. Oh, why is the word already up there? I didn't click that. What the what the what? What the what the what? What happened there? Was there a mistake by me or by somebody else? No, it's my fault. I hate it when it's my fault. <laughs> All right, so being a contractor, right? For example, if you build houses for a living, well, sometimes you have work, sometimes you don't, right? If if the recession is in and people are, are struggling right now, maybe they're not building as many houses right now. So you don't have as many contracts, like those would be contract workers. Um, so usually what they, they get a job, it's a contract, it's for a short time. It's temporary, right? You do the work in your contract, what your contract says, whether it's what you have to build or how much time you work there, and then it's over. You move on. You have to get another contract. So they're all temporary. Like all of the staff, like at New Way now, it's not like in Kumfa. It's very different down here. And because we're more of an, well, yeah, we're, we're, we're 95% an online school now. Like Leigh is teaching right now. She has a class downstairs. Um, oh yeah, she's not coming back because she's teaching. <laughs> she has an on-site class today. So we do have classes here, but 90% are online. Um, so, the students we hire now, the people we hire now are university students. Everybody that we hire to help with the slides and TA and different things are all university students. But we know that all of these jobs are just temporary now. Nobody's coming to work here for a long time, like a like a like a Lanang or a, you know Mung and all these other teachers who worked with us for years. Um, these these ones only come for three, four, five, six months, and then they leave. They just want to get practice on their English, get a little work experience, and then they have to study something else, and they move on. And when they finish school, they move on. So we just hire temporary staff now. Short time. Not lasting for a limited period of time. Lily, temporary. And again, not porary, porary. Temporary. Temporary. 
Yeah, temporary. 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 Yeah, and actually the stress is on temporary. Malo. Temporary. 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 Temporary work. Temporary stay. Temporary whatever it is. Okay, so this one is not about the workers. Well, it is. It is, but it's about how the people are all connected in a group, right? And the act or the state of being joined together, especially in a political context. But it could be a workers, right? Meaning all these miners or construction workers, uh, they pay a fee and they have a representative, the one voice that speaks for all the workers when they deal with the bosses. So the bosses don't deal with the staff. There's one person in the middle that does all the negoti negotiating. And just like, and I think it was in one of our classes recently, wasn't it? The European what? A group of European countries that come together to create one voice for one organization. What is that called? Exceed. Mm, no. What do we call the group of people or countries or politicians that come together and have one voice? Which is a very powerful thing. That's why these are very powerful in, in like the truckers mm, and the workers mm, and laborers mm, and uh, United Nations. Uh, yeah, well, they're part of it. It's like, well, it, uh, no. <laughs> it's called a union. Right? The EU, the European Union, right? One small government leader, the leader of the United Nations, represents many, 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 many European countries. The labor union or the truckers union or the mining union, workers union, again, they all pay a small amount in their paycheck into the fund to hire basically a leader amongst there for all the workers and that person uh, deals with all contract negotiations and workman's compensation and injury and all the different things like that to protect the people so that the big companies don't take advantage of the workers and pay them less and fire them when they want. No, no, no. You got to go through the union representative why do you want to fire this person? Oh, we wouldn't. You, you're going to talk to me before you do that. You know, so very important people. Now, again, it can be corrupt, just like well, teachers' unions. We have a lot of teachers' unions too. Even Canada and America has a teachers' union. One person is his job, her job, is to speak for all the teachers together. It's very hard to fire a teacher in Canada or America. It's like they almost have to commit murder before you could fire them because of all the restrictions and, and the union protection and all this kind of stuff, which is a problem. But in the old days, you would have miners and stuff, workers come and the, the owners would pay them little and, and, and take advantage of them and it was really bad. So, you know, it can be bad both ways. If we could find a medium, everybody would be better off. Next, union. Oh, I love this stuff. What is that? We've had this before. You make the nice motorcycle jackets with the nice Gucci bags, the nice shoes, the nice belts, the nice wallets. No, it's the skin from cow. What do we call that? It's a leather. Leather bag, leather hat, leather jacket. And then all these treasures. And uh, see the color? That's like a bronze shield with gold and everything in there. Where's my cursor? Here it is. All right. That's the real stuff. This is the real stuff. We have people give signatures, right? Write their name to make sure that it's really, really this person that said yes to this contract. So I can't sign my name for you. You can't sign your name for me. It makes the contract real. The leather is real, not fake. What is another word for genuine or real? 
Another very important word to learn. It'll be in many of your readings in the future. And a very good word to use. A person can even be very genuine or very, meaning very honest and trustworthy. Solid character. What's that word? Starts with an A. It's not a fake. It's the real thing. It's not Nike from China. It's Nike from America. <laughs> the real sneakers. A character. A what? I don't know. It's authentic. Authentic. That signature makes this contract authentic. It makes it genuine. This is real authentic leather. Highly creditable. It even has a serial number. You know, like this is authentic Egyptian or Roman treasures. There's nothing fake in here. We didn't just make it and make it look like that. It's not a copy. This is the real stuff. This is the stuff that was found in someone's tomb or someone's castle or something. This is authentic. This is real, really, really 5,000 years ago. Authentic. The real thing, not a fake. Authentic Mona Lisa painting, not a copy or a print. The real thing. Authentic. To prove its authenticity. Let's try that, Lily. Authentic. Authentic. Something is real, true, or genuine. Some people say genuine. Something is real, true, genuine. Yeah, genuine or genuine. I've heard both. Lily Milo. Authentic. Authentic. Yeah, something is real, true, or genuine. Calories. Yeah. Now, this is something I haven't had the time to do, but something I intend on doing in the next few years for sure. I want to take some kind of a, uh online class or something about uh, dietitian, nutrition knowledge so that I can... I can understand and, and record, you know, how many calories, know how to record and keep track of how many calories I have and have a chart knowing what foods have so many calories and the different fats and, and the different um, nutrients and stuff that's in food. Um, because I, I, I do believe that a healthy diet is a healthy life. I, I really do believe that. I believe a lot of the advertising is false. And I believe that a lot of the doctors out there are paid to, to mislead us. It's happened a lot in America where, you know, they said cereal was good for us, but yet, you know, cereal, there's about as much nutrition in cornflakes as there is in the box itself by eating it. <laughs> so I really want to learn more about, um, what is it? Well, learn about nutrition, I guess. Learn about healthy diets. Just, you know, a simple course so I can at least... I can at least be conscious and, and, and know what I should and shouldn't be eating and, and have a little bit more knowledge because now I don't have any knowledge at all. I, I just eat what I like and I stay away from things they make in factories and I'm very healthy and I don't have any medicines and I'm not in the hospital, you know, and I'm in my fifties. So I think I'm doing okay, but I know I could do much better if I had more knowledge. So one of these days I'm going to take some kind of a nutritious or dietitian course so that i know more and understand more cuz um, i have no men i have no idea how many calories i there are in a cup of coffee i have no idea how many calories there are in in the things i eat um so i definitely want to learn more <laughs> i think it's a smart thing to know about you know and all the different i'd like to also know you know and i'd like to have a chart of all this stuff like knowing which vegetables and fruits and stuff have zinc and iron and vitamin B and vitamin D and vitamin E and all these other things. And I'd like to know more about what each vitamin helps you with, with your body. I want to learn more for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. All right. So I think we're done with food and diets. Ah, well, no, next week, healthy future. Now we're going to talk about, mm, no, it's going to be, oh, yeah, I, I saw the thumbnail for this one. <laughs> this one's good. I'm going to show you next week's thumbnail, the, the class. Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. I'll throw this on the video later. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. Open this. 
maximize. Okay. This is our class next week. A little bit different. It's not so much about food. It's about uh, how we take care of ourselves and the future of health and medicine. Um, share. Dun, 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 dun. One, two, video three. That would be this one. Live forever, the human body. <laughs> We're going to read about predictions of um, what some people think will happen in the future in a hundred years from now and a thousand years from now and how old people will live in the future or will we live longer or how is it going to work? So it, it's an interesting read for sure. But uh, the vocab, the first vocab, I've already started preparing the class. Very easy. Uh, the middle is okay. And then there'll be some hard words again at the end to, to uh, of course, build, build our vocabulary and learn new words. But it's a very interesting read for sure with some doctors. Yeah. Any questions? No questions. Ha! I'm the teacher. You're supposed to have many questions for me every week. Should be like Q and A question period now. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I know. All right. Well, you girls have yourself a a peaceful, wonderful little New Year's Eve, and we'll say goodbye to 2022. And the next time I see you next year will be 2023. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.